2019 web seminar, where you'll see all the new features and advancements of the FileMaker platform. We're joined today by Andy LaCates, Director of Solutions Consulting, who will be doing the live demo and covering your questions at the end. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. Also, you can listen to today's session through the audio broadcast on your computer. If you're listening to this on your desktop, but let's say in the future you wanted to use an iPad or an iPhone, then go ahead and download the free Citrix GoToWebinar software from the App Store. Finally, if you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. That, that number's also up there on the screen. Okay, um, at the end of the session, we're gonna have an opportunity to answer some questions. Let me talk briefly about how you enter a question. Go to the control panel, click on the questions section, and your question and then hit send. We'll cover as many questions at the end as time allows. Okay, let's get started on the main part of our presentation. Today, we're here to talk about the new FileMaker 13. We know that if you're already an existing customer, you already love FileMaker, but you're gonna really love FileMaker 13. FileMaker 13 is a major release with many advances in features and technology. It makes it easier for you to create solutions, but probably the biggest advancement is being able to run your solutions in more locations. In particular, we've had a significant breakthrough in our web technology. Now we've heard you. Over the years, you've said, we want to deliver our FileMaker solutions in a web browser. Maybe you have a web dashboard, or you have a partner portal you're building, or maybe you just have some mobile workers. Whatever, you want your solution to be in, the file, in, a, in a browser, and you want the full FileMaker experience. And we've tried to do this, but the problem was the state of web technology wasn't advanced enough for us to be able to deliver the full FileMaker experience. I'm pleased to say that's changed due to a, a multi-year engineering effort on our part and advancements in things such as HTML5, CSS3, and improvements in the JavaScript engines and browsers, we've been able to achieve a major breakthrough in our web technology. And that breakthrough is FileMaker WebDirect. FileMaker WebDirect allows you to deliver desktop-style solutions in a web browser without programming. Now, what do I mean by desktop-style solutions? Well, this means that the solutions that you will create are interactive. So you can do things like drag a file onto your solution or click to view a chart. It also means that your solutions will support automation. In fact, over 90 FileMaker script steps are supported in FileMaker WebDirect. And it means live update to data and, data and solutions. So, for example, if you tab out of a field, it's going to go ahead and commit the record and update everybody else. For example, let's say that you have a document. You could drag it onto your browser and create a work order for a customer. Maybe your solution then validates this request and pops up a custom screen, a custom dialog, for example, allowing you to assign the work order to another person. As soon as that request is assigned, that other person's browser would immediately update with a flag, letting them know a new order is there. That's the FileMaker experience. That's an interactive solution running in a web browser. The best part is you already know how to do this because FileMaker WebDirect leverages your FileMaker Pro skills. There's a few things that you'll want to keep in mind as you develop a solution for WebDirect, and we have some documentation on, on what to keep in mind. But in general, you can develop for WebDirect the same way that you develop for FileMaker desktops. This version of WebDirect is tuned for desktop browsers, which means that it really runs best. It's designed to perform with uh, the high-performance browsers that you find on laptops or on desktops. But uh, you're going to love it, and you're going to find that the solutions that you create in FileMaker can now be deployed easily in at more places than ever before. Now, this alone would make a major release, but that's not all that's in FileMaker 13. Another area of development is in the area of the iPad and iPhone. Now, you've been building some amazing iPad and iPhone solutions with our existing product. In fact, FileMaker Go to date has been downloaded over 800,000 times. Um, and we, you've asked us, we want to make solutions that are even more iOS-like. We want to match some of the features that we're seeing on apps on the App Store. And so we've added some enhancements in FileMaker 13 that allows you to do just that. Now you can add things like slide controls or popovers to your solutions. You can navigate records with gestures. Um, and you can add features to detect screen rotation. So you can handle it when your customers, better handle it when your customers rotate that iPad. We know that many of the solutions that you're creating 
involve mobile data capture. But this can be a challenge on a mobile device where there's no keyboard. So we've added some features to assist there. For example, we now have built-in barcode scanning that uses the cameras that are part of the iOS devices. And there are new keyboard types that allow your users to more quickly enter information um, by popping up a keyboard that's specific to the information that they're trying to capture. So you'll build better iPad and iPhone solutions using FileMaker 13. Now one of the things that iOS has really changed um, has been everybody's perception of what good design is for solutions. Uh, in fact, in recognizing that in FileMaker 12, we introduced a new feature called Themes. This allows you to apply a professional polished design to the solutions you create, even if you're not a professional designer. And you love it. People have been using that feature. We've gotten positive feedback, but we did get one major request. You said, we like your themes, but we want to go take them further. We want to modify them and make them our own. So now in FileMaker 13, you can. We now support custom themes. This means that you can get in there and change all sorts of aspects of the themes, how things look, the, the, how, how objects uh, appear, and then you can save those changes and then reuse them. You can reuse them on another layout. You can use them on another solution. You can even send your themes to other uh, FileMaker developers and allow them to use your theme for their solution. So you can now get the, the kind of consistent look, professional look that you want across all your solutions. And the themes themselves have been advanced with new features such as the ability to add backgrounds to them. Now, beyond that, we've added a feature that allows you to further dig in and tune your look, tune your themes the way you want. That feature is called styles. If you've ever used a word processor, you'll understand how to use styles. Uh, think about a typical document. You might have a series of headers in the document. Now you can go in and change one header, or you can go ahead and change the style of the header, and all your headers will update all at once. Styles work exactly the same way in FileMaker 13. You, you, um, all the different objects on your, on your layouts have styles, buttons, fields, and you can go ahead and change a single button, or you can update the style and have it update the layout, or indeed your entire solution all at once. Styles can be saved, they save with the themes, so you can have your own custom styles stored in your own custom themes, reuse them, and really build the look that you want. You can tune the look to create your own, your own style, your own, um, your own image. Now, once you've created your solution and you have this beautiful interface and your users are using it, you're going to be capturing some data. Many times that data is very essential to, to your business, to your operation. It it's, might be quite critical. And you're concerned about securing the data. We've added some features in FileMaker 13 that helps make your data more secure than ever. The first feature is database encryption. Now, for a long time, you've been able, we've been able to encrypt your data as you move the data across the wire. So if you have a client connected to a server, the data will be encrypted. Now we've added the ability to have your data encrypted when it's stored on the device. So you use FileMaker Pro Advanced to enable encryption for a particular solution. Once you've enabled encryption, your data is encrypted any, everywhere, whether it's stored on an iPad or an iPhone or stored on a server, that data is encrypted. It's very strong AES 256-bit encryption, so you can feel confident that your data is secure. Speaking of security, I mentioned earlier that uh, FileMaker supports the ability to encrypt data when it's moving over the wire between a client and a server, but how do you know? In FileMaker 13, we've added a visual security indicator. This lets you know that you have a secure connection. It'll even let you know if you have a valid certificate. For, the, for you more experienced users, you're going to love FileMaker 13. We have dozens of new features designed for developers, advanced users, even actually many of these can be used even by intermediate users. One of, I can't, I don't have time today to cover very many of these. I'll just give you a couple of my favorites. One of my personal favorites is conditional object show and hide. This allows you, actually quite simple, to use calculations to determine whether objects appear or not on your layout. So for example, maybe you have a field that contains uh, inventory, and when the inventory drops below a certain amount, you want a number of fields to appear on your layout in order for you to be able to place a new order. Another feature I like uh, particularly is HTTP POST. This is a great technique that allows you to e more easily integrate FileMaker with other applications, especially other web applications or web services. Another useful feature is on layout size change trigger. It's a long name there, but it's a very simple concept. This allows you to see when the layout changes. In particular, this will help you to capture the situation where someone rotates a device 
and then you can take appropriate actions. So again, there's many more features than we have time today, but if, if you get FileMaker 13, you're gonna love digging through these features and seeing how much farther it can take your development. Of course, once you create your solution, uh, most often you'll be wanting to post your uh, solution up on one of a FileMaker server. And we've always focused on FileMaker server of having scalability, reliability, a robust server, but also we emphasize ease of use, ease of installation, ease of administration. And in FileMaker 13, we've certainly made administration much easier by introducing a brand new ad administration console built on HTML5. This means there's nothing to install. You simply can point your browser to the admin, uh, to the, uh, admin console and administer your server from anywhere. There's some great new screens, great new interface to allow you to have good control over your server to manage what's going on up there. Speaking of good control, there's a wonderful new feature that allows you to tune the performance of your solutions by assigning scripts to server. This means you can determine uh, uh, for certain scripts whether you want those scripts to execute on the client or on the server. So you can adjust your, um, your application that you're building for maximum performance. Now I could go on, but I'm sure the best way for you to really get a sense of what you can do in FileMaker 13 is to see it in action. So I'm delighted to now turn this over to Andy LeCates who's gonna demonstrate for you FileMaker 13. Take it away, Andy. Well, thank you, Ryan, and thank you everybody for attending uh, this afternoon or this morning or this evening, uh, depending on where your time zone may find you. Uh, I'd like to start today uh, with FileMaker Pro and log into a host uh, sharing a file that I've got that I will then uh, later use uh, to show uh, FileMaker Go and FileMaker WebDirect as well. And I think we can cover a lot of the features that Ryan mentioned today and give you a sense of our vision behind these features and how you might apply them uh, as well. For the demonstration, we'll use this file that you'll see on the screen right now called Gallery Master. And this is actually a, a real-world prototype that's being built for an actual customer, an actual business uh, that runs fine art galleries in some of the major cities in the U.S. I believe New York, Las Vegas, I think New Orleans, and I believe they even have a gallery in uh, Paris, France. And the system is predicated on a fairly standard data problem, which is how do I connect my data about customers with data about my vendors, or in this case my artists, with data about the products or the artwork those artists produce for us to sell to our customers. And you can see, um, well, I should go back there to home, you can see automatically or immediately um, some of the new design functionality in 13 coming right to the forefront. For instance, the ability to have a full screen image background for the entire layout, not just a part by part sort of layout graphic. And as I drill down, you'll see some nice simple themes that uh, make for a beautiful list view. Of course, I can drill down on a customer if I want to look at more detail about that customer, see the history of purchases that customer has made. Note at the top, as I uh, tap or click on the, uh, the customer's uh, logo there in the header, we have a new popover button. It's a new style of control that you can put on your layouts that in, th in this case is used uh, for navigation and can allow me to skip directly from customers over to my artist vendors and maybe look more closely at my artist vendors and see the history of, um, uh, of their art that we have sold, uh, maybe some contact information. At the bottom you can see a web viewer coming to play to show me biographical data about uh, the artist that I can uh, share with my, with my customers. And of course, we have artwork uh, or the products that we sell. And if we drill down on some of the artwork, perhaps uh, this painting here, I can see uh, different views on it. This is another new layout control that's available in FileMaker uh, 13. It's called a slide control. And it works much like a tab control, but with a new animated navigation model and these dot controls that allow me to click from slide pane to slide pane very quickly and easily. I've also got, of course, um, uh, uh, the new programmatic object visibility that Ryan mentioned is one of his favorite features. And you'll notice down here at the bottom right hand corner of the screen I've got dimensions for this painting uh, in width and height. But if I go forward one record you'll notice that the dimensions expand to include depth and weight in pounds. Uh, so here I've got a sculpture, which is 3D and, and may you know, require the extra dimensional uh, data that are in those fields. But when I go back to a 2D piece of art like a painting, maybe those don't apply. And so programmatically, based on that data, I can decide which fields to show at any given time. You can see a similar behavior in the bottom left-hand corner of the layout. Here, let me do a find all records for a moment so I can see different data types. But here's a record where my painting has a status of in transit. It's being shipped to a customer or maybe to me from the artist. And so I have some, some fields that are available for viewing at the bottom uh, part of my screen there. But if I move forward to a, a piece of art that is for consideration, i.e. an artist has pr uh, provided us information about it, but we have not yet accepted it for sale or for consignment, and you can see I get a, a different set of fields at the bottom left-hand 
right-hand corner of my screen. This again is a nice application of the programmatic object visibility. I can dynamically change the contents that show up on the layout to reflect the state of the record and the, the information that the user cares about at that moment in time. You'll see other things like popovers here for, um, in this case, the, the artist bio that is available. It was previously, we saw it on the artist page, but here it is. We can expand it and see it uh, while we're looking at uh, one of their products or one of their pieces of art. And let's go back to list view on my art, and you'll see, once again, a popover control coming to play here that actually has a slide control embedded in it to allow me to tune the types of search or filter that I'm using for my list view so I can see a different set of records, but I get a nice dynamic behavior as I'm navigating through my records. And all of these objects are very easy to set up, just like existing tab controls, existing web viewers, and controls like that. Um, they're very easy to add to your layouts, and, and we'll take a closer look at that uh, after a bit. Okay, so let's uh, go and actually use FileMaker here to maybe search for a piece of art. In this case, I've got uh, one called Artifact 62, and I can drill in on it, and we can see that uh, this is a nice uh, uh, work of art. It looks like a painting, acrylic and varnish on paper, by Tom Everhart, who's one of our leading uh, artists. And I might have a customer that I think would be interested in buying this, this piece of art. So while I've started here with FileMaker Pro on the desktop to sort of show you some of the FileMaker 13 new features, what I'd like to do is shift to the iPad. And in doing so, I'd like to change our use case a little bit. What I'd like to suggest is that on the iPad, um, it might be useful for a salesperson who is consulting with a customer as they uh, work on, or excuse me, as they uh, look at art that they might be interested in. So here, let me actually mirror my iPad so I can see it here on the screen. And so what I'm going to do, I'm on the same network. I'm holding an iPad physically in my hands, and, and you'll see the output here uh, on my computer screen. And I'll just launch uh, FileMaker Go. You may notice in version 13 of FileMaker Go that we've also changed our application Chrome here so that we have a new UI. It's nice and bright and very white, and it matches the iOS 7 in many ways. I can see servers on my local network. You can notice we have a lot of those here at FileMaker Inc. I also have files that are existing on my iPad or on my device itself. And of course, the ability to look at recent files or maybe servers on my network. And in this case, I will look for the host or the server uh, that is uh, sharing the gallery, gallery master file. So here it is at the bottom of my screen. I'll tap on the Gallery Master file to open it. And you'll see that the user interface here is very uh, similar to the file that existed on the desktop, of course. All of the themes and styles and graphic capabilities, of course, work on the iPad with FileMaker Go, just like they do on the desktop. At the bottom, though, you'll notice the buttons here. I have artwork or my products. I have customers, of course, but I also have a new idea or a new uh, button there called consultations. And this would be the notion of uh, working with a customer to um, look at art while we're on the show floor together, while we're out in the uh, studio. And so here I've got a customer named Holly Bullock there, and I'll tap on her record. And as I'm walking about the screen with her, oh, it looks like I may be having a issue with our graphics. Let's give this one minute and see if we can get a refresh. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to set that up one more time. Let's set up my mirroring. Okay, we're back on screen. Sorry about that. So here I am looking at a consultation record. This record, again, uh, the notion is I'm a salesperson. I'm on the gallery floor. I'm looking at a piece of art. I have Holly with me. And while I'm with her, I'd like to provide her more data about art that she might be interested in. I have two pieces of art here that I've already collected that, that we've looked at together. But you'll notice the button on the bottom that says Scan New Item. Why is that there? Well, in many art galleries um, you, you may be familiar with, you'll see a piece of art on the wall with maybe a placard that sits below it with the name of the piece of art and some more information about the artist. Wouldn't it be nice if we could use that and leverage that technology, which I'll do right now by hitting that scan button, invoking the camera of my iOS device. So I'm actually simulating this right now on my desktop, of course, here in my demo lab. But you notice as soon as I got a focus on my barcode there, FileMaker actually read the barcode, converted into a, a, a number that it could search on to find that piece of artwork in my database. So we have automatic barcode scanning, as Ryan mentioned in the slides previously, available to you that will invoke the camera of your iPhone or your iPad and allow you to automate your processes. So here I am then, of course, looking at this piece of art that we looked at on the desktop before. And um, one thing I'll point out, although you can't see my finger doing the dragging here, I'm actually using a sliding gesture with one finger across my container field. And you see the animated result on the screen where I can look at different views uh, on the art. I may also, of course, want to confirm this price 
at five thousand five hundred dollars seems actually you know quite low uh, for for the quality of gallery that we are. And sure enough, by conferring with the back office, I might find out that indeed there was a misprint that actually deserves another zero. We can update that price information, and of course that updates uh, to FileMaker Server, which means FileMaker Go accrues that update instantaneously. So it is a full peer, just like FileMaker Pro on the desktop. Finally, let me tap on my uh, graphic image there. And note here we get a, an interesting view that allows me to use slide gestures to actually navigate amongst different theoretical room types. And I can tap on the photo itself to change its frame. Or I can click on a color palette to change the color of the wall. And the notion here is to model the idea of the piece of art in context in a room that may be reflective of or similar to uh, what the customer may have at their home. Excuse me, I mishit my home button there. Um, but here's an idea where you know, using all the advanced functionality that we're providing in terms of new controls, new objects, new themes and styles, you can really create beautiful databases that don't look at all like a database. You can use the notion of uh, data gamification to capture data in a way that isn't you know, traditional data entry into um, database fields, field by field by field. Right? So we think this is uh, potentially very, very exciting. Okay, well, how do I then create layouts uh, that work with my iOS device and work with my other clients? So let's back up for a minute. I'm going to actually hide Reflector for a moment, and let's go back to our desktop, and what I'd like to do is build a brand new layout. We've actually modified the user experience in FileMaker itself here. So I'll go into layout mode, and I'll use command end to ask for a new layout. And so you'll notice my layout, um, I can easily, well, this is a new dialog, I guess I should say first. Uh, this new layout or report dialog uh, gives us an environmental chooser that allows us to quickly um, put in some information like the name of the uh, layout, what table of data I would like it to uh, expose, but then notice I can very quickly and easily decide do I want this layout to be shown on a computer, on a mobile device, or perhaps I want the layout to be uh, used for printing a specific kind of report, envelopes, labels, etc. In this case, I will choose a layout that's built for the iPad, and I want it to be in landscape mode. And you'll see at the bottom left-hand corner of the dialog, I can choose portrait versus landscape. And I'll make a form uh, type of layout. So with a couple of quick decisions here, in one simple place, I can decide what kind of layout I want and say finish, and FileMaker will create that for me automatically. And here I have a blank layout ready to go and ready for me to put content on it. If you're an experienced FileMaker user from prior versions, you'll notice that we also don't add a footer part and we don't add a bunch of fields that you may or may not want. You're left at the start, if you will, and so you don't have to get rid of a bunch of junk before you start uh, adding the pieces that you want. Right? So we think this, again, will make it much more fluid to get where you want to get and start building your layouts. Well, okay, I do want to put something on this layout. How do I do that? Up in my toolbar, you'll notice that we have a button called Field Picker. And if I click on it, we have another new control in FileMaker. And this heads up display, which we call the field picker, allows me to quickly and easily grab some fields and drag and drop them and put them out onto a FileMaker layout. Of course, all the abilities to quickly select things and modify them the way I would you know, do so in FileMaker 12 continue to exist here. Note I can drop in these other objects and the, uh, the dynamic guides appear automatically. I don't even have to wait until I drop the objects on the layout. That just works, uh, which is really, really nice. So I can quickly assemble a good looking layout here. I can do some other things too if I have a lot of fields in my tables. You can actually filter your table. So I could select a field here like bio. And notice at the bottom I also have drag options that allow me to change the placement of fields if I put multiple fields on the layout at once or their labels. Maybe I would prefer for the field label to be on top of the field. In this case I do. I'm going to drag this one out and put it over here uh, below my, uh, my phone fields and then let's take the bio field itself and stretch it out so it's a little bit bigger and maybe aligns with some of the other fields uh, behind my field picker there. Okay, so now I've got that about where I want it. Let's do one more thing that you may have noticed. I kind of crossed over with my mouse, but there's a button here called New Field. This actually, believe it or not, allows me to add a new field to my database right here. I don't even have to go into Manage Database to do this. And notice I can even change the, the data type uh, for this field. In this case, I want it to be a date type of field. That's all I needed to do. Now I can easily set my label where I want it and put that field back out on my layout and align it up just the way I want and I'm ready to go. Maybe off by two pixels, but of course we can adjust. Now, is all this going to work on the iPad? Well, let's see. I'm going to actually save this layout uh, to commit it. Actually, we'll go to browse mode so we can see it here in, in FileMaker Pro. And let's go back and look at my iPad. I'll go up to my uh, menu there. Let's navigate our layouts and look at that new layout called Artist Detail iPad. And sure enough, everything that I created on the desktop is immediately available here.
I should point out that <clears throat> Ryan mentioned you can now customize data input so that it is appropriate and native for the iOS device. So let's take a look at that. My birthday field, if you remember, was a date type of field. If I tap into the birthday field, notice I get a native uh, picker that allows me to uh, uh, easily, using iOS's native uh, field picker type here, uh, enter in a date for maybe somebody's birthday and commit that to the database. Um, I can also, um, well, let's tap into the email field for a second. And notice that the keyboard for this uh, particular field, or even for my phone number field, is a standard text keyboard. One of the popular requests we've had <clears throat> is the ability to customize the keyboards uh, for our fields so that a user can, again, have a native experience. So how might I do that? All right, let's go back into my layout. We'll go into layout mode. And actually, I noticed that I think this could be a little bit better centered here. While I'm at it, let's have a little fun with my layout. I'm going to open up my folder here and add a graphic maybe to my layout, which is my logo. So we'll put that in here somewhere. And so that's now in, and we'll get it aligned just so. And maybe I want to put some text up there, so we'll call this layout my artist detail view. And let's make that field not bold and a little bigger. And let's also align it with my fields just right. There we go. So that should look a little better. And then I mentioned the keyboard types. Okay. Well, let's look at the email field, and I'm going to go to my inspector. In inspector, we have a new option under the data tab. It's down here near the bottom of the data tab, and it's an option for touch keyboard type. And what I can select in here is a different type of keyboard that will appear on a touch device. And in this case, I'm going to switch to an email type of keyboard. That was easy. I can select my phone field, and of course we have a phone type of keyboard here as well. You'll see other numeric keypads there, uh, URL uh, specific keyboards, and ASCII keyboard, and of course default for data type means FileMaker will auto-detect much the way it did with the birthday field and gave me a date picker for it. So let's go back to, uh, actually I'll just save the changes to the layout here, go back to my iPad, and you can see that my graphic I dragged and dropped onto the layout is here, my title is here. What about the uh, fields themselves? If I click into my text field, of course I have a normal text keyboard. When I tap forward to my email field, notice the four keys in the bottom right-hand corner of the layout, or excuse me, of the keyboard will actually change. So now I have an at symbol, a dot, an underscore, and a dash to help me enter emails. More dr visibly dramatic, you can see when I click in the phone number field, of course, now I get a phone uh, data entry keyboard. So you can see I can very strongly um, tune the experience now on iOS. And in just a few couple minutes, this may not be a perfect uh, layout, but in just a few couple minutes, I've been able to build a very authentic uh, iOS experience uh, with these fields. So there's much, much you can do uh, with FileMaker 13, and there's much, much more we could explore. But in the interest of time, I think we'll uh, move forward and look at uh, making this more beautiful by invoking themes and styles. So Ryan mentioned themes and styles, and let's take a look at those. I'll go back here to my layout. And of course, you probably know if you've used FileMaker 12 before that we have the ability to change themes uh, in the platform, which can change dramatically the, the visual indicators or the, the colors and, and, and fonts and such on my layout. In FileMaker 13, we actually have 11 new themes. We have the Inspire, the Aspire family. So we have Enlightened, Enlightened Print, Luminous, Sophisticated, Tranquil and Vibrant, and then we have touch versions of those as well. So I can get just what I want. So I could pick something even as dramatic as Luminous Touch here and say Apply, or OK. And you'll see that this theme will actually um, commit a, you know, a lot of changes here and give me a nice, beautiful, contrasty layout on a dark background. You may notice the background of the layout itself is an image. And in fact, that image can be customized. So on top of the theme, I can come to my Appearance tab, and while I have nothing selected on my layout, I will have the ability to change a fill graphic or a fill image for the layout itself. And I could go back to a standard sort of solid color, or even use gradients. But in this case, I'll choose a new image. And I'll go out here where I've got a nice photograph that was taken by uh, one of our employees on the product management team who traveled, I believe, to South America last year and took this photo. And so you can see the, the sort of very dramatic change here. And I'll save the change to my layout, which is simple command S here, and switch back to my iPad so we can see if it has updated there. And sure enough, the iPad is instantly updated. The same way the data updates automatically go between clients, of course, the layout and design updates do as well. Now, while that's a beautiful photo, that might be a little bit busy for someone looking at this iPad. So maybe I don't like the change I've made. Well, what happens if I go back to FileMaker and I accidentally go to browse mode? 
In prior versions of FileMaker, this would undo or actually remove our undo stack, and I wouldn't have the ability to sort of back my way out of, of this design if I didn't like it. But it turns out in FileMaker 13, one can actually go to browse mode to test a layout, and the undo stack still exists. So if I go up here and I say undo formatting, I can get rid of my, uh, my photo change there, I can get rid of uh, my theme and go right back to where I started. Let's go and change our theme back to uh, sophisticated here for a minute and look at it because what I want to explore is uh, one of the things that Ryan mentioned before was that themes are collections of styles and styles are very important to how we build layouts now in FileMaker 13. So for instance if I select on this text block up at the top of the layout and I go to my styles tab which is new to the inspector in FileMaker 13 you'll notice that there are a number of styles available here. I've got title text 2 and 1 and navigation text and so these styles are all modeled or labeled to be used for a specific purpose and you can build themes of any name for any purpose that you want on your layout. In this case I'm going to leave this, um, this text block in the default style that, that I you know, formed it with earlier but I'm going to go down and select my name field and you'll notice there's a default style for the name field as well as a minimal edit box style. And If I click it I can see that my field will actually go transparent which maybe I don't want for this field but I would like that down in my bio field uh, where it's so big I might not want all that contrasty light color so that'll make a nice transparent view on that data. But maybe I would like to improve the name field beyond the default style. Of course all of the appearance uh, features that allow me to individually change uh, properties of, of the object are still available. So if I'd like to change the fill color for this, maybe to a sort of light, uh, you know, pale blue or something like that, I can do that. Hopefully your screens are contrasty enough to see that change. But here I've got a blue field now on my uh, lighter background, and um, I like that. But notice that the change itself didn't accrue to any of my other fields, even though they all share the same style, default, that was in my theme. Well, why is that? When I click back on that blue field, you may notice that the default style itself actually has a red arrow next to it. And, and if I look at it in my appearance tab, you'll see the default style has an asterisk and again that red arrow that indicates that this style itself has been updated. There's been additional properties that have been changed by me, the developer. And now if I want, I can actually save those changes back to the current style. And if I do that, what happens? Well, every object that uses that style will immediately accrue that change, and so now it's part of the style. So quickly and easily, I can format all of my fields uh, to match uh, the, the way I like that one sort of default style. Well, what about other layouts? If I switch over here to a second layout that also uses this same, same theme, um, the second layout has also fields that use the same theme and the same default style, but these haven't updated. Why is that? Well, it turns out that the same way that we were able to save the, the changes to individual properties down to the style, we can save the changes to the style down to the theme. And once I do that and save changes to the theme, all the changes will be propagated across layouts to any layout using this theme. Now, I should point out this dialog, this can't be undone. So because we're affecting so many layouts at once, it doesn't go sort of sequentially and give us something that we can easily undo uh, in an undo stack. But in this case, I know I want to do it if I go to save. I can go over here to Artist Detail iPad 2 and I can see that my default styles over here for the same sophisticated theme all get the updates that I've applied. So this can be a tremendously uh, beneficial feature in, in efficiency and allowing you to uh, modify your systems and also keep them very consistent from layout to layout to layout as you're doing your design work. Uh, we're really excited about it and we think this will really help you get to more beautiful databases more quickly uh, in the future. I should also mention before I get entirely away from themes and styles that if I go into the file menu uh, and look at file manage themes that themes can not only be updated across layouts within an in individual solution but you can manage your themes within a solution and track which themes are being used where you can also import themes from file to file so if you come up with a specific custom theme that you like that maybe incorporates all of your your business uh, you know styles and, and, and colors and fonts and such you can apply those standards across all of your solutions for consistency and professionalism Okay, well now that I know how to do all the styling and make layouts work good for, uh, work well for my iPad and my desktop, what about WebDirect, which, uh, which Ryan mentioned earlier? Let's take a look at WebDirect, and let's do that by, I'm going to go back to my home layout here uh, on my uh, desktop, uh, and then I'm going to go to browse mode, and let's get away from the desktop for a minute, I'll just hide FileMaker, and I'm actually going to hide my iPad as well, and let's go look at my browser. So here I'm just opening up uh, Safari, and uh, what I'd like to do is go to a specific URL. And this URL points to the same FileMaker server 
that we use to open up Gallery Master on the iPad and the desktop. And you can see here the FileMaker WebDirect homepage. This is a homepage that we provide automatically with this software uh, with FileMaker Server, and it will take any file that you have that is available for WebDirect access and, and present it here in a list. This homepage you can replace with your own custom homepage and style that up to your heart's content. So if you want something more beautiful or that fits in well with your solutions and your web pages, you can certainly uh, replace it with your own. But here I am now logged into Gallery Master from the web. So what is our use case? In this case, the use case here is that I would like to present a portal that's available to my artists or my vendors so they can access my system. And maybe as a business owner, I can't depend on them having FileMaker Pro or Go available at all times, but I'm pretty sure they have a browser. So wouldn't it be nice if I could let them get to my database through FileMaker WebDirect? And here I can. And so I'm playing the role right now of Anne Bichelier. She's an artist who's uh, presented or, or provided all these works of art for me to evaluate for potential sale. And it turns out in the past, um, she's also provided works of art that I have accepted for sale and are still available in some of my galleries. And she's given me a couple things that have sold pretty well. And so I like her as a vendor and I might like to uh, work with her some more. But this is a, a portal for her to log in and see how her work is doing. In fact, you notice at the bottom of the screen there are dot controls there. She even gets a slide control that enables her to see reports on her sales activity so she knows what kind of art is selling and where it's selling well. So what if she wants to sell a new piece of art then in one of our galleries? Well, up here in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you can see a button that says New Artwork. I'll click on it and watch what happens. I get a popover button, much the same way I did on the desktop earlier for navigation. And I can come in here and give my uh, piece of art a name. I can say it's medium is acrylic on canvas. Uh, be help if I could type there. I missed a letter. And uh, let's come back here and say, uh, what is your price? Maybe she really thinks we can get $10,000 for this. And then drag your image here. What's that about? Well, it turns out that WebDirect in a container field supports drag and drop, no problem. So I can drag and drop a graphic right into that container field. Again, of course, a FileMaker button works here just like it does on the desktop. I've now submitted that record. It's available now, and I can drill down by clicking on it to get more details or to offer more details. For instance, maybe this is 40 centimeters wide by uh, 60 high, and uh, its description is my best work to date. Um, please uh, sell this one from, uh, let's say, maybe New York, right? And uh, so she can offer that uh, to my, my art gallery. And then the question is, well, do we want it or not? Well, let's see. She submitted this record into FileMaker Server. Presumably, then, it should be available for us here in the artwork database. So let's go back here and do a search and see if it indeed is. And sure enough, here is the file. I can see it in a couple different views. I can see her note uh, to me and uh, decide whether I want to acquire it. Maybe in this case, I think I, I would like to acquire it. I agree, uh, but we really want this for Las Vegas. So I'll put that there. And I'm going to uh, suggest acquiring it for Las Vegas, maybe put an option in here to purchase it outright. And then she might need a shipping label. So I'll go out here and grab a shipping label graphic and just drag and drop that in there and then send that to the artist. Now, will she get that update on her web page? Let's go back to the browser and take a look. Sure enough, all those upgrade updates are here. The update to the description field, so I'm messaging her back, the status, where we want it, the shipping label, and everything else. And she can mark it as shipped and send it uh, on its merry way to us. So you see there's a lot of power here. Automatically, we're getting data updates between this client and our FileMaker Pro client, and of course, uh, by extension, the FileMaker Go client. WebDirect works as a full peer uh, client in the FileMaker ecosystem. Okay, what else might be here? Let's go back to our, um, our gallery, and let me show one other potential use case for WebDirect, which is coming up here. Let's look at our dashboard. So maybe I'm playing the role now of the business owner who just happens to be on vacation but would like to check in on occasion to see how the business is doing. And so here is WebDirect, again, looking at a, a rather rich layout, um, giving me a dashboard of, of the current state of the business in a variety of my studios. And notice that graphs and charts uh, can work just swimmingly here. And of course, I can summarize up other data and get it available in the database. You might notice Tom Everhart, who created that um, one piece of art we looked at earlier, is now in second place for sales. But if I go back, of course, to the home office, and let's go back to our list view and search for his record again, maybe I update that. 
because uh, Holly decided to sell or to purchase it after all. So I'll update that as sold and commit that change to my database. Now what happens when I go back to my web view? Well, Tom has been promoted to our, our first place artist in terms of sales this quarter, right? So um, we think there are many, many uses for WebDirect. These are just a couple. What I'd actually like to do is just take a moment um, to uh, dig into WebDirect a little deeper by creating a new file, hosting it on server, and showing it to you. And I'll, I'll explain why I want to do this in, in just a moment. So I'm going to close out of Gallery Master for a minute and create a new database using one of the FileMaker starter solutions. We've redesigned four of these, contacts and content management and assets, as well as I believe our, uh, what's the fourth? Is it inventory or invoices? Um, I'm, I'm forgetting right now, but I'll leave that for homework. But here, let's uh, build a contacts database, and you'll see that this particular starter solution uh, takes full advantage of the uh, new themes and new styles and new objects and, and, and types of uh, layout objects that are available in FileMaker 13. It is missing something, though, which is data. So if you'll in, indulge me, I'm going to close this version, which is empty, and I'm going to open up um, a second copy I have of it, which I've called Meet 13 Contacts. Now, this is the exact same database. The only difference is there's data here. So I've got a photo. I've got contact information about uh, 10 different contacts that I may uh, work with. Okay, so this is our standard uh, contact starter solution. I should point out that there are layouts in here designed for the desktop, for the iPad, for the iPhone, and for the web, for WebDirect. And so what I'd like to do is actually take this file now and share it for use with WebDirect. I'm going to do that by closing this file, and I'm going to go up to my file menu, and under sharing, you'll notice there's an option here called Upload to FileMaker Server. Notice that I don't have to uh, actually open up a server administration console. I can simply log into the FileMaker Server from FileMaker Pro which presumably is somewhere near the solution that I want to upload, right? So I can uh, connect to server, and now I can actually change where on the server I want this file to be. Maybe I'll make a, a folder called Meet FileMaker 13 here for us and say OK. And I can browse and go find that file that I want to upload. And notice automatically open the database on the server after upload. I'll go ahead and say yes and upload it. Notice it very quickly goes across the network. It's now up on server, and it's ready to be uh, accessed. That went very fast, and uh, you may be wondering, uh, did it really get there? Well, let's go look. We'll do that by logging in here to the FileMaker Server Admin Console. So the Admin Console, I'll get prompted for credentials and log in, but you'll notice something that I don't get. I don't get a download of an application using Java Web Start. It's very simple and very direct, and we have this beautiful HTML5 redesigned FileMaker Admin Console that quickly gets me to the data that I want. It's simple to navigate, has very intuitive controls that are well described here. In this case, I'm on my activity tab for databases, and I can see that I have my uh, Meet FileMaker 13 folder with that file that I just uploaded available for sharing on FileMaker Go and Pro, uh, but interestingly enough, not for WebDirect. How do I turn that on? Well, let me show you. I'm going to do that by minimizing this for a moment. Let's go back to FileMaker Pro. And in FileMaker Pro, let's open that file first. So I'll link to my server again and open up, what do we call that? Meet 13 contacts. Here it is. Let's hide this folder. Now that I have this open, the one thing I didn't do before under sharing that I should show you now is the ability to configure for FileMaker WebDirect. So this is how easy it is to set up FileMaker WebDirect. All I have to do is make sure the file is selected and make sure that some users have permissions for it. In this case, I'm just going to say all users. Of course, you could restrict this to just specific users by privilege set uh, and by their, um, their account credentials, right? But in this case, we'll just open it up for anybody. So now that I've done that, this file is available for WebDirect. OK, let's open up our browser. Just for kicks, I'll open up a new tab here. And in the new tab, let's go back to the WebDirect homepage. As that's opening up, let's see if I can align these up just so. I'm on, a, on my desktop, I'll go to my web contact details, because that's where I'm going to end up here in WebDirect. In my browser, I'll open up Meet 13 Contacts. Notice it opens me right up to my contact details layout, and look at how similar these two layouts are. They are virtually identical. And so I wanted to point that out, and I also wanted to point out one of the reasons I'm using a starter solution right now is that you do have the option to show the full FileMaker status toolbar providing the entire FileMaker Pro, uh, if you will, client experience, or the FileMaker client experience, including things like the navigation booklet that allows me to navigate from record to record in the upper left-hand corner there. I can also, of course, skip immediately to a record. I can look at my found set data, add new records, delete records. I can even do things like 
use quick find to search for any name that starts with DAV, in this case, Dave Andrews. Can I edit? Of course I can edit. I'll come in here and commit a change from Dave to David and update that simply by clicking out of the field. Does that update go to my desktop? Of course it does. That works both ways. And interestingly enough, if I try to put that back, watch what happens when I'm editing in two places. If I click in the browser after I'm editing in my, um, on my desktop, notice I get a record locking conflict. This is intentional, of course, and exactly what would happen on FileMaker Pro. And this goes to, again, the richness of the experience. In addition to automatic updates of data from client to client, we also respect things like uh, record locks, so you don't have to worry about manage that, managing that amongst your users. Uh, buttons work, all the layout objects work. If I scroll down a little bit here, you'll even notice that web viewers even work. Here's a map that's being shown based on the address information for Dave. So this is a web viewer showing web content in a FileMaker layout being displayed through the web in a browser using WebDirect. That's a little bit recursive, but I hope you follow along. I think that's quite remarkable. So it's a tremendous experience, I think, and very easy to get to WebDirect, and I hope you'll, uh, you'll look forward to taking advantage of it soon. The last thing uh, I'd like to do here before uh, I go, let's log out of WebDirect here for a minute. And uh, what I'll do is um, go back to Pro and let's open up a um, getting started tour. When you first get FileMaker 13, I just want to point this out. If you are new to the platform and you want to learn about FileMaker Pro, this file will become visible on your desktop and you'll be able to use it to get an introductory tour of the platform. It is actually built using FileMaker Pro. It's a, quite an interesting solution and you can use it to explore how to work with records, how to edit data, how to view data and sort and much, much more. So I hope you'll take a chance to explore it and, uh, and the application and get comfortable with using FileMaker Pro, FileMaker Go and FileMaker WebDirect. I appreciate your time in showing uh, the product. What I'd like to do now is uh, turn things back over to Ryan Rosenberg, who will take us forward towards Q&A. Well, thank you, Andy. Um, just before we do the Q&A, I have a, just a couple more things I'd like to uh, uh, cover with you, a little bit about how things work on the server. In fact, uh, here is a little, here's a graphic of the FileMaker platform. You can see that Andy covered all of these elements. We certainly talked quite a bit about FileMaker Go. We talked about Pro and the desktop. We talked about WebDirect, and we touched on server as well. So I'd like to go a little bit further on how server's working. First thing is a, some really neat thing to announce to you, which is that we have pr uh, previously had two servers, and you had to make a choice. Did you want the sort of standard server or the advanced server? Um, and we, you no longer have to make that choice, because in FileMaker 13, we're giving it all to you. You get everything that was in the advanced server, but at pretty close to the standard server, what was the standard server price. So not, not only the ability to connect lots of uh, FileMaker Pro and Go users, but things like custom web publishing, the ODBC, JDBC connections feature, uh, group start page, um, administrator groups, all these features are included in FileMaker Server 13. And additionally, you get uh, one concurrent connection, as we call it, for FileMaker WebDirect, so that you can go ahead and test that out and see how, uh, how connections work there, and you can see how the WebDirect feature works. Um, now, I, I need to talk to you a little bit about how you connect FileMaker Go, that is to say uh, iOS clients, and how you connect browsers to the server, because things are a little bit different there. In FileMaker 13, we introduced the concept of concurrent server connections, and we charge for those connections. Uh, we talk about connections, but another way to think about them is sessions. Okay? So let's talk first about how it works when you have a FileMaker Pro client or a FileMaker Pro Advanced client. In these cases, you purchase as many clients as you need, you deploy them, and then you can connect them to the FileMaker server at no additional charge. Simply pay for the, pay for the uh, clients, deploy them, and away you go. Now, when you talk about free clients, uh, that's a little bit different. So one thing that's free is FileMaker Go. That continues to be free for download from the, uh, from the iTunes App Store. Also, of course, with web browsers, those are freely available as well. For free clients, what we do is there's a charge when you connect to the server. We charge you for concurrent connections. So again, paid clients, no charge to connect to the server. Um, free clients, there is a connection charge. Well, how many connections would you need? How many concurrent connections? Well, let me explain how that works. Basically, it's the maximum number of uh, sessions you have going at any one time. So think of a typical work group here. I have a whole bunch of different people. Some of them use FileMaker Go. Uh, some of them use browsers. Some of them use both during the same day. And they come in at different times and they get started during their day. And uh, then they pop on one device and off one device. So how many connections do we need? Well, that depends. As you look during the day, here right after everyone gets started, everybody's working hard. We have eight people connected at once. 
um, eight sessions going. There, at lunchtime, maybe we drop down to only one session. In the afternoon, maybe it pops back up to three. In this particular case, we need to support a maximum of eight concurrent connections. Now, we sell connections in packs of five, so you would purchase and apply two five packs to your server. Now you'd not only have enough for eight connections, but you'd have some left over. So again, this is current connections. They're all shared. It doesn't matter whether you're connecting a FileMaker Go client or whether you're connecting a browser. A connection is a connection. You use it when, some, when there's an open session, when someone drops off that session, or when that session times out, you can set the timeout. Um, then it's available for reuse with somebody else. Hopefully that makes sense. However, if you, if you want more information on this, I recommend going to the FileMaker web store. There's a whole video on concurrent connections and how they work, which you can watch. There's other information you might like to know about. Uh, for, for example, upgrading. Um, we've, we're holding the line on prices. So that means that uh, you can upgrade at the FileMaker, Pro 12, uh, the FileMaker 12 price until September of this year. After that, for some, uh, uh, for some environments, for some uh, versions of FileMaker, the upgrade price will go up. In some cases, upgrades will no longer be available in the case of licensing. If you want more information on any of this, a great idea is to call FileMaker Sales. I have the number on here for the for um, uh, U.S. If, however, you're outside the United States, please just go to your local country FileMaker website and you'll find the number for sales there. So contact sales and they'll explain pricing, upgrades, connections, whatever questions you have. If you have a question about system requirements, um, we didn't have time to go through all that today, So, but go to the FileMaker website and look under each of the products, FileMaker Server or FileMaker Pro, whichever, and then under the tech specs, you'll find a lot of information about, uh, about technical specifications. You especially may be interested in the server to find out uh, what are the technical requirements for uh, FileMaker WebDirect and when do you need to have one machine, when, can, when do you need to have two machines, when you can get by with one, what type of machine do you need for WebDirect. Okay, um, we've covered, we've not covered FileMaker 13 comprehensively. There's more than 50 new features in FileMaker 13. So you're going to love finding out more about it. I recommend you go to the website and kind of dig around. If you want to get even more information and learn a lot more, I, I also recommend joining the free FileMaker TechNet program. Uh, technical, the technical network is um, now has over 50,000 members worldwide. It's completely free. You can connect with other uh, FileMaker developers. You can also download free content in order to learn more about FileMaker. So some great ways to learn about the FileMaker 13 platform. Well, another way to learn about the FileMaker 13 platform is to ask us some questions right now. And we've got a number of questions. And so I'm going to uh, 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 switch over to that mode, and Andy and I will, will answer a few. The first question, and we, we get a lot of this. I'll turn it over to Andy. Is um, Andy, how do how do I mix together uh, clients from let's say FileMaker 12 Pro clients with a FileMaker 13 server, or let's say that I have a FileMaker uh, 12 server and I have FileMaker 13 clients? What can I really do there? Yeah, so the the heart of the answer there uh, is that with FileMaker 13, we have not changed the file format. We did, of course, change it in FileMaker 12 for for those of you who have used it in in prior versions. Uh, but the FileMaker 13 uh, still respects the .fmp12 file format. It's the same file format as uh, FileMaker 12. So in short, uh, you can easily mix and match FileMaker Pro 12 and FileMaker Pro 13 clients on a given solution. Uh, it, and that's a great benefit if you're migrating forward because if you have an existing FileMaker solution, it will instantaneously work in 13 without change. However, if you do apply the new features of FileMaker 13, uh, many of those are not understood by FileMaker 12 and, and could cause uh, issues. So you'd want to be careful about what clients are connected uh, should you start to adopt new features. For instance, I, I believe Ryan mentioned earlier the, um, the perform script on server script step, which is very powerful. Uh, and if you use that in, in a FileMaker 13 script with a hosted FileMaker server solution, obviously you'll need FileMaker server 13 to actually run that script, but a FileMaker 12 client wouldn't even understand the script step, so it just wouldn't work, and, and you'd have to trap for an error there and, and make sure you take care of that. Other things like layout objects um, and controls, like a slide control or a popover button, also would be not understood by FileMaker 12. And as such, you might get a mess of objects that exist within those controls sort of falling onto the layout, if you will. We try to handle it as gracefully as we can, but if you're joining us and you've used FileMaker for some generations, you may remember when we first introduced tab controls and older versions of FileMaker that didn't understand tab controls. It just wouldn't work uh, as well as you might expect. So I guess my closing statement on that 
is that as a developer, you can also control which version can access your solution. So if you do implement FileMaker 13 features and you want to require FileMaker 13 to access them, uh, you can set up the file so that you must use FileMaker 13 to get to it. But at a fundamental level, you can mix and match them, and, and that will work. So mix and match as much as you see uh, it fit. We recommend you move to 13 to take advantage of the new features, and there's a lot of new features to take advantage of. Um, here's one that I can answer. Uh, uh, do client-side plugins work with WebDirect? Well, the answer there is no, because, of course, uh, we're, we're operating in a browser. So a, a plugin to a FileMaker client is not going to operate in a browser. What you can do, though, is use server-side plugins. So that won't work in every instance, but there will be cases where instead of using a client-side plugin, you move to a server-side plugin and you can perform the same actions. Um, can I use one machine for FileMaker Server 13 with WebDirect? Um, that depends. In cases of very small deployments, the tech specs do call for one machine. As you start to expand the number of users, you're going to want to go to a two-machine setup. So again, to get more information on that, go to the FileMaker server area of the FileMaker website and then look under tech specs and you'll get a lot more information. If, if I may on that, Ryan, um, it, you know, for our customers, it may help to think of FileMaker WebDirect if you are going for scale for more than just a handful of users. Think of it as an application server and treat it just like you would another application server, like for instance, uh, you know, workstation virtualization through Citrix. Uh, there you would want to dedicate a machine to those user sessions and you'd want to make sure you have lots of memory and a fast processor on that machine. If you want to scale to a lot of WebDirect uh, uh, client sessions, uh, you'll need to uh, use the same basic model. Okay. Um, uh, makes perfect sense. Um, here's one that is a, it's a great question. I'll, I'll have you answer this one, Andy, which is, does the new barcode scanning work with QRC codes or NFC? Uh, QR codes are supported. I believe the, the list of uh, barcode types that is supported is listed in the help file. Uh, it is many. Uh, I, I don't know of any that, frankly, aren't supported. Uh, and I recall on, on testing the standards recently that there were some we didn't list that were. So I, I'd recommend you, you test it. But in general, uh, my experience is that absolutely, yes, uh, they, they, they usually are supported. Yeah, you, you, it's a long list. I've seen it myself. Um, uh, here's another question. Uh, can the themes be used across multiple solutions in FileMaker 13? Um, so the answer there is yes, and I tried to demonstrate it a little bit there. Um, themes can be imported from file to file. So uh, once one uh, creates or updates a theme uh, to their liking, uh, you can uh, move that theme around amongst uh, files and, and share it amongst solutions so it can be applied uh, uh, across your server, for instance. Okay, here's a question. What are the differences between FileMaker Pro and Pro Advanced? So uh, in general, Pro, Pro Advanced is best chosen when you're developing a solution that's either a little more advanced or if you're supporting multiple people. It's a great uh, tool. There's lots of uh, features in there that can help you. For example, you can get into custom menus. There are tools that help you do, uh, uh, do more script debugging. There's a database report that lets you see a little more of the architecture of a database. But one really important new feature is the encryption. So if you're going to want to encrypt your solution, you need to get a copy of FileMaker Pro Advanced. You only need uh, one copy to do that. You don't need a copy for everybody, but just one to encrypt the solution, and then you go on from there. Um, does it matter what I use, platform I use to develop? Can I develop on a Mac or a PC? That's been, always been one of the great strengths of FileMaker, right, Andy? You can develop on the platform that you want and deploy where you want. Yeah, since uh, that's one of those, since back in the day, you know, FileMaker, one of its original competencies back in the early 90s was its ability to run on Mac and Windows and be virtually identical on both platforms, and that continues to this day. So FileMaker Pro and Mac or FileMaker Pro and Windows have the same feature set, and uh, generally speaking, you can do your develop, uh, development on either uh, to your preference. Um, speaking of, of support on multiple platforms, you know, that show hide object Someone's asking here, well, will that work on WebDirect, or is that just something that's only going to work on the desktop? You no, know, the conditional uh, object visibility does work on desktop and FileMaker Go and on FileMaker WebDirect. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And again, this helps you so you, you know, as I was mentioning earlier, the goal is you have one set of skills, and then you can reuse them across multiple uh, places. We have just time for just a couple more. Um, here's a question, which is, uh, what happens if you hit the number of concurrent connections? So let's say that you've applied 10 connections on your uh, on your uh, server, and then you have an eleventh person come on. What's going to happen is it's not going to let you come on. Now you may say, but how will I know that? What, there's a real nice feature in there which lets you uh, set a, a warning threshold there on your um, on on the ser through the server administrator. And so if you you don't have to hit hundred percent, if you're even hitting, I think it's eighty percent, an email can be sent out warning you, hey, you know you're starting to approach your limit, and you can manage your uh, manage your connections that way. So you don't have to worry about 
having connections sort of connect out. And you can upgrade the connections directly on FileMaker server as well to instantly solve the problem. You can go right in there and, and upgrade. And finally, there is actually a, a, a version of uh, server that's available if you have a very large deployment, you have lots and lots of FileMaker Go users, for example, which you can get that kind of puts no connection limit on there. So there are lots of options for you uh, to, to manage that. Okay, I think that um, this is all that we have today time for. I know there's a lot of great questions. I, I wish we could get to every question, but again, please feel free to contact us online. Feel free to um, go join the TechNet and post your questions there. Call sales, um, you know, do skywriting above the building. One way or another, get us your question, and we're, we're really happy to engage with you and give you answers. Uh, and, you know, I'd like to close by saying uh, thank you very much for taking the time here. Um, we, we hope you love FileMaker 13 as much as we do. We do it all for you. Our, our goal in life is to create great, uh, great software that allows you to create great solutions. So on behalf, uh, behalf of myself and Andy and the FileMaker team, the entire FileMaker team, go on out there and create something great and uh, look forward to the next time that we have a chance to talk. So this, uh, this concludes our webinar for today.